what is up guys we are back again in the chair and today we're going to discuss a little about stability i know gary is probably going to record a video on this as well um but what i want to discuss rather than talking about this stability as a whole as a bigger concept i want you to distinguish in yourself the difference between internal stability and external stability so you can find stability in two forms in terms of you can externally stabilize things you can lock yourself down on a bench so there's more stability because the bench is affording you that but then you can also lock in your joints so that you have more stability in certain areas of your body one of the key ones that you hear a lot talked about but not really discussed further is people going like oh you want to have core stability but what, what does that core stability actually look like for you? Like, what is that actually contributing to your ability to build muscle, produce force, you know, get stronger, whatever it is? You have to address where are the weaknesses in the chain of events that you have to go through to perform an exercise? And are you losing stability and thus are you losing force capability by not having stability in those joints or those, that musculature, you know? So one of the ones you see a lot is the core and people kind of bag on about it going, oh yeah, you know, core training, blah, blah, blah. But they never actually identify what it means to have a stable core. Because again, you think of it like the core is essentially stabilizing the, the upper body and the lower body together as one unit, you know? So you can either arch into that and stabilize that way, put a lot of stress on the, the vertebrae. You can go down like this, crunch over into flexion, and you can have stability that way. Although e neither of those are probably going to give you the most stability possible, you know? Say for example, in the bench, arching into it may be a good strategy because you have the stability of the bench to support that arch, you know? Whereas doing that same thing in a squat is probably gonna be a bad thing if you actually want to hit depth in your squat, you know, and actually have, you know, a safe spine. Um, so do distinguish in your own head the difference between internal and external stability, you know? So if you wanna create internal stability, that is gonna come from actually strengthening musculature and learning the correct movement patterns to actually express that strength, you know? So <clears throat> you might have really, really strong legs. You might be able to leg press, I don't know, a million kilos, you know? But that might not translate at all into say a squat you know because you've used the external stability that a leg press affords and you've never learned to create internal stability around the hips around the core even in the upper body as well so that is why you see a lot of disparity between people discussing oh this exercise is better this exercise is better this is worse exercise a lot of it comes from the fact that you have to internally stabilize. You have to use all these extra muscles to, you know, hold the bar in place, stabilize the hips. And people will say that's better for muscle building. That's better for athletic performance. Neither are better necessarily. It all comes down to strengthening, strengthening the musculature and actually learning to integrate that stability into your events. You know, so if you're saying like, oh, the squat is better for athletic development because you know, you stabilize more, that, that might not be true. You might not be able to transfer the strength you gained in the squat into your athletic events. Maybe it's running, maybe it's rugby, I don't know. So you may not be able to transfer that as directly as maybe you are able to transfer a leg press, you know? It's the fact that you have to stabilize that people are having this disparity in their thought processes with exercises. Because they, they use the argument that, oh, you have to use a lot more stabilizing musculature. It disrupts homeostasis more because you have to use more musculature to stabilize it. And this it is true, but it's also not true in terms of how they extrapolate that. Like a squat isn't necessarily going to improve your running performance if you still can't stabilize correctly. Like, yeah, you may have increased your squat 60 kilos, but if it didn't actually improve your ability to stabilize the pelvis, didn't improve your ability to actually integrate that core movement into you know, a movement pattern, uh, it, it's not going to translate as much as you think it will. And you see this a lot. People will say, oh yeah, I started squatting or I started doing Olympic lifting to improve my jumping. And you're like, oh, did your jumping improve? No. And you're like, oh, well, why? Like, you, you said you were doing that for this outcome. 
how come you haven't got that outcome that you were looking for? And a lot of it comes to do with the fact that things are movement specific. Like, yes, you do have to have the muscular and neurological capacity to exhibit that strength or that movement. And you can, to an extent, increase that in the gym, but it all comes down to the law of specificity at the end of the day. And if you can't create stability in your joints, first of all, you're not going to maximize your hypertrophic response. You're not gonna maximize your muscle building response. Like if, you, if you're if you using the squat to train your legs and your legs are never the limiting factor because your pelvis is shifting all over the place, your core is coming in and out, flexion and everything. If you have no stability, like you're not going to be able to put that into an athletic endeavor you're not going to be able to maximize your muscle building capacity because it's always going to be your core musculature or your your hip musculature that is limiting your ability to put force into the legs or produce force from the legs you know so do think from the ground up because we do have this tendency in the industry to have more of a polarized view of this exercise is good or this exercise is good and like to an extent that is correct but it's only correct insofar as you can actually perform that exercise correctly and in a stable environment either internally or externally and you can use both it's not an either or argument you can use like say you want to improve your squat you can use the leg press to strengthen your legs and slowly integrate that external stability that the leg press affords and slowly integrate that into an internal stability so that when you go back to squatting or whatever athletic endeavor that you want to do you are able to actually stabilize the pelvis better stabilize the core better but again it comes down to actually identifying your goals and identifying why you're using an exercise and what is the outcome of that exercise like yes most of you are probably going to go yeah i want to build muscle i want to you know maximize my muscle building capacity maybe you want to maximize your strength maybe again you want to maximize your athletic prowess you know you want to go to the gym to improve i don't know your rugby your football your i don't know whatever it is you're either doing that in a holistic way like you're actually looking at the musculature that needs to be developed you're looking at the stability that needs to be developed in the specific joints that apply to your exercise or your your goals and you're strengthening those you're not thinking a squat will automatically improve your performance you're not that, that's not a given the reason it's a given is because it's strengthening musculature which is improving your internal stability and therefore it's allowing you produce more force in the given sporting endeavors you want to do or it's allowing you <clears throat> produce more tension on the musculature that you want to develop you know so i guess to kind of sum it up is look for external stability wherever possible if maximizing your muscle your, your hypertrophic response is the goal you know if, if that is the goal and you want to build the biggest chest you possibly ever could like yes externally st stabilize as much as possible you know if you want to bring that chest training into a more I don't know, say athletic endeavor, like you want to actually ensure that that muscle building that you have done actually improves your performance, you're going to have to integrate that external stability that you've created, that extra musculature that you've created, and then you have to ensure that that is translating into an internal stability, you know? So again, that does come back to strengthening musculature, but it also comes back to strengthening the nervous system. So you actually have to know how to stabilize internally. Because it's not it's not a given if you you know do a bench press and you pack your shoulders in and you really arch into it and you get you you get your bench press up to I don't know 180 kilos that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to translate that into I know the equivalent of a 180 kilo dip even though it's a very similar movement pattern because you haven't created the internal stability in those joints because you haven't integrated that movement so this is where a lot of the back and forth arguments go like this exercise is better this exercise is better it's because people aren't thinking in terms of the overall stability of those exercises the overall goals and then also what you are actually trying to achieve by doing a certain exercise like if you just want to look a certain way there is no need to ever integrate these movements into you know more athletic endeavors like there's just no need you just externally stabilize wherever possible you know if you are looking to maximize your health or you're looking to maximize your 
athletic prowess, you do want to learn to internally stabilize. You know, and I don't know what Gary's gonna say in his videos on stability. I'm sure he's gonna be dropping straight fire. Um, but do look at that with the lens of stability is an internal and an external thing. You have to be able to do both if you want to have the most bang for your buck in terms of the training you're doing. However, that does not mean that you always have to be doing both. Like if you are, are I just wanna build my front delts. I wanna get bigger delts. Like there is no need for you to overhead press like standing overhead press like there's there's no need you know that's not that's probably not going to be the best way for you to overload your your delts it, it just isn't you know there's no it's, it's really hard to create enough internal stability in the shoulders in the hips in the core to press enough weight overhead to maximally stimulate the delts to their full capacity you know so like the, the analogy I always use, you can't fire a canoe or fire a cannon from a canoe, you know? So if there's no external stability, like you might have the best ability to produce force in your joints. If you might have the most, the, the strongest, most awesome nervous system, but if there's no stability outside, like in the overhead press, you're standing, that's what's giving you the stability. It, like uh, again, if you try to throw a punch and you're hanging from like a meat uh, hook, like it's holding you from the upper body, like that punch is gonna have no force whatsoever. You know, there's no, there's nothing actually stabilizing you because you're not touching the ground, you know? So you have to look at that in terms of, there's always gonna be some degree of external stability Depending on your goals, you may want to increase that external stability, you know, lock down the joints into a machine, into a bench, whatever it is. But if you are thinking, I want to maximize my athletic prowess in a certain sport, in a certain field, like maybe it's just for health and life, like you don't want to be just only confined to machines, you know, you do want to have some ability to actually internally stabilize. Like if you only did machine based work, you may not have the ability to translate that into an actual life situation. Like if you just did a leg press, you just did a leg extension, you just did a hamstring curl, say, like there is other musculature and other ranges of motion that you're just not getting into with those exercises. And therefore you are not strong in those exercises. But yeah, if you want to maximize your hypertrophic response, do look to the stability aspect of things, do look to the external stability, do look to the internal stability. And at the end of the day, it does come down to being able to strengthen the musculature that needs to be strengthened to create that stability, either by you know starting with an external stabilizing movement and then moving to kind of integrating that, maybe through a larger training program, maybe even within a workout, maybe you do start with an internal, or sorry, yeah, an internal stability exercise where like maybe it is your overhead press because you're thinking, I want to be able to integrate this into my life. You may realize that yes, it's not going to be my most bang for my buck in terms of a hypertrophic response, but I want to have some more carryover to athletic endeavors because I don't know, I play a sport, perfect start with that internally stabilized exercise and then move on to externally stabilized exercises like maybe you go on to i know a shoulder press a dumbbell shoulder press you know seated against a bench you know so do realize your goals dictate what kind of stability you want to build do realize that the stability is both internal and external but also realize that a lot of the arguments you see in the fitness industry whether this exercise is better this exercise is better is wholly dependent on what people think they are getting from an exercise and that may not be what you actually want to get from an exercise.